Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a case to show how to use rotational atherectomy for a calcified lesion that could not be crossed by balloon. The case was a 72-year-old female with angina on exertion. She is diabetic, hypertensive, and smoker. She had three vessel disease where she refused surgery. The LID is heavily calcified with a proximal critical lesion. The circumflex has mid-total occlusion and distally seem to be small. The RCA has a mid-critical lesion. The decision was to do PCI for the RCA first and then the LID. This is the LIO view of the RCA shows a mid-critical lesion. Actually, a subtotal with heavy calcification. Distally, the vessel looks calcified with atherosclerosis. This is the area of view of the same lesion. We can also see the heavy calcification in the LED and left circumflex. So I decided to go as usual with wiring, balloon, predilatation, and then stenting. But a 1.5 millimeter balloon with a single dot did not, did not cross the lesion. So what to do in such situation? There are several solutions when a balloon do not cross a lesion. Take a smaller balloon like 1.25 or if available, a one millimeter balloon. Increase the support and this can be done by having a better, better guide catheter. And in this case, Amplus left catheter will provide a better support or use an anchor balloon. And of course, this would be proximal to the lesion. Or use a guide catheter extension. Another way is to fully inflate the balloon at the proximal part of the lesion. This may modify the lesion and allow crossing. A small microcatheter may be used to cross the lesion. Or use a therectomy, whether rotational therectomy or laser. Finally, if all not useful, then a subintimal course with a CTO technique may be useful or a combination of any one of these tricks. We tried to modify the proximal part by inflating the balloon to a very high pressure, but that was not useful. Of course, in such cases, you have to be sure that your wire is intraluminal. Since our plan was to use rotational atherectomy for the left system, we decided to use it also for the RCA. This is because modification of the lesion by atherectomy will make further procedure by ballooning and distenting easier. Basically, the rota burr is a burr that is covered at its front face with diamond crystals that ablate calcified tissue when spinning at a speed of around 150,000 to 180,000 rounds per minute. This burr is advanced to the lesion over a special stainless steel wire that is 325 centimeter long with a body of 0.009 inch and a tip of 0.014 inch. There are two types. The most commonly used one is the floppy one the extra support is usual, usually spared for osseal lesion. The wire is difficult to steer, so a microcatheter may be needed to cross the lesion with an ordinary wire and then exchange for a, a rotor wire. Here we are using a Corsair microcatheter to cross the lesion. The advantage of this microcatheter is that you can rotate it several times clockwise and counterclockwise until you cross the lesion. Finally, you were able to cross the lesion. The workhorse wire was pulled back and then through the microcatheter exchange for the rotor wire and the microcatheter was pulled back. The burr is advanced within its sheath and inside the guiding cath using a special advancer that is hand control. The system is operated, operated by a pressurized nitrogen or air and it is controlled through a console and a foot switch pedal. 
The newer version simplified the device by incorporating the foot control pedal into the advancer so that it can be controlled all by hand. There are several bear sizes ranging from 1.25 to 2.5. Usually we start with a small bear that is 1.5 or 1.75. For CTO, we may need to start a smaller 1.25. And when PCI fails, that is for secondary rotational atherectomy, and where there is no dissection, a larger bear can be used that is 1.75 or 2. If severe deceleration occurs with larger bear, then we can downsize to a smaller one. We have to determine the size of the bear from the beginning because this will dictate the guiding catheter that is going to be used. A bear artery ratio should be in the range of 0.5 to 0.7. And with the concept of a plaque modification, a 0.5 ratio is usually enough. The ablation technique starts by checking the free lumen round per minute rotation of the bear, advance the bear by pushing the advancer knob and observe under fluoroscopy. The bear speed should not decelerate more than 5,000 rounds per minute. Ablation time approximately 15 to 30 seconds. Intermittent technique is important because it allows clearing of the blood by flushing the particles distally. A light pressure and gentle push procedure produces smaller particles. Do not ever tighten the Y adapter. It may inhibit the spinning of the burr. Packing motion is also important. That is to advance and retreat the burr three centimeter at a time. Never stop a burr in the lesion and do not allow the burr to remain in one location while rotating. This is because it may result in excessive tissue removal, it may damage the wire, and may result in entrapment. Individual runs are usually, as we said, of 15 to 30 seconds, and total time should be less than 5 minutes. Final polishing run, when there is no any drop in the round per minute, and there is no resistance. This is the first run, and you can see the pecking motion and this is done by using the advancer. Still in the first run, we can see that the lesion is not crossed. Several runs were required, and here we can see the lesion finally crossed by the bear. Pacemaker was used because the patient has severe bradycardia. Usually pacemaker is indicated in the RCA and in the dominant left circumflex. It is not unusual to get a spasm with the rotablator, and this can be easily resolved with nitroglycerin, as we see in this case. Balloon dilatation was easy after rotational atherectomy, as well as stenting, and this was the final result. So the messages are, interventional cardiologists should be prepared to deal with balloon anacrossable lesions and know the tricks that are used in this situation. Rotational atherectomy is useful in calcified vessels. It modifies the lesion and makes coronary stenting easier. And thank you.